I figure since Hillary's been so prominent recently in the vlog, I might as well talk about her all day. <laughs> Plus with it being our seven year anniversary. So obviously, so seven year anniversary, we got married in 2011, but we were actually together for four and a half years before we got married. So we've been together now for 11 and a half years, I suppose. And it's been a good thing, man. I mean, you know, every relationship has its shortcomings, I think, that's just the way people are in general. I, if you don't, I think that there's something that's deep beneath the surface that you haven't seen yet that is probably <laughs> a big warning. If you can't find any problems with the relationship, then you probably haven't done enough deep digging <laughs> because nobody's perfect. Uh, Hillary is close, to be honest. The, her major flaw that I would find is that she's fairly messy and I like to be a neat person and this, that's like probably the only strain on a relationship is her her lack of neatness and my need for it. This place that I'm sitting now kind of physically as a place in the world encompasses how I feel about being with Hillary. It's like on on top of the world and I've always felt that way and I'll, I'm sure I'll continue to feel that way for the rest of my life which is why I married this woman, right? So I just wanted to tell a share a story I guess. Hillary and I first met. I was playing at a, a weekly gig that our band had gotten in Kailua, Hawaii, and she was working there. And some nights, it was a Wednesday night we'd play this gig, sometimes there'd be almost nobody there. And in fact, there was one night in particular, I remember, it was just basically Hillary and our bass player's girlfriend dancing to the music and the rest of the place was empty. Hillary actually made the first move. She, she left a little she left a little note on one of my one of the pizza boxes. She brought us she brought us food. So she was the aggressor in the situation. She left the note on the pizza box, and she told one of the friends of the band that she she thought that I was um, a local boy with probably five or six kids and maybe a couple baby mamas or something, <laughs> which could have been if I didn't beat the girls off with sticks like I did with my drumsticks. There was playing in a band, you know. There's, there's girls are coming at you, it happens. Anybody who's played in a band knows this is a fact. But my friend told her, of course, no, he's actually single and available. And she's like, oh, really? <laughs> and she came and tracked me down another show. And at first, I mean, obviously she was cool. Right off the bat, I was like, oh, she seems cool. And then uh, then I realized, yeah, she's she's actually, she seems a little different than just random random girl chasing band guy. And so I went to, went to hang out with her. I remember the first day we hung out, when I took the bus, because I was living with my buddy Pete over in Hawaii Kai. And so, and it's a long bike ride from, I didn't have a car. It was a long bike ride from Pete's house to Kailua. So I would take the bus and we, we met up over there. She pulled up on a um, little beach cruiser and we put her on the handlebars and I rode around and we just went and hung out and did, did our thing and that happened for about two weeks or so. I would, I would go back to Pete's and then the next day I'd end up coming right back out to Kailua. After about two weeks of that she's like, this is ridiculous, why are you just gonna, are you just gonna take the bus back and then, and then come back tomorrow? Like why don't you just stay here? And I was like, hmm. Yeah, that sounds like a great idea. <laughs> that was two weeks into the relationship. And I think that could have been detrimental for most relationships, but luckily what we had going on with the band is that we would go on tour. And there were times, you know, even right towards the beginning of our relationship, we went on tour for like two months. And that's a regular thing with a band, you go on tour and we leave the island. I think that was a big part of the success of our relationship because even though we moved in together really two weeks, two weeks into the relationship, being able to have that time apart gave us time to, you know, have our own space even though we, we even though I took over her space real quick. Life was good. Life is good, man. Life is good. It was, it was a good life going on like that, you know, playing in the band. Finally, I got a vehicle for $350 from another band that was actually touring around the island. They were leaving. We got Spider Van. She has a little van named Charlotte, a little blue 87 Toyota van with a big old reflective spider sticker emblem on there. <laughs> he had to like whack the solenoid on the starter every now and then to get it started. He had to jiggle the, the side slider just right to get it unlocked so you could actually open it up. <laughs> it was a good island vehicle cruising around. You could sleep right next to the beach, open up the side door and park on the beach. That was beautiful. Wake up at 
ADs. Beautiful, beautiful life, beautiful life, man. And so we actually had, we had a moment in the relationship where I became unsure and you know, there's, there was this other, other girl, Hillary went on a trip and there's this other girl and nothing really happened between the other girl and I, but it got me thinking about, I don't know, you know, I'm a, I'm a guy and I was like, that was stupid, in hindsight it was stupid, but I, I just, we broke up for like maybe two weeks, <laughs> I think it was about two weeks it lasted and I was like, what am I doing? Why am I, what, no, no, why, this is, so, Hillary, I'm sorry for that moment, that, that I know that that it was hard for you, and uh, it was a very emotional time. But obviously, we pulled through that, and it wasn't too long after that. It was like that was my like wake up. I was like, wait a minute, do I, do I not want to be with this girl like forever? And that, that at that moment, that was during that time, I realized, no, actually, I think I want to marry this girl. <laughs> what am I thinking? That I did actually do what is the tra traditional thing around here and went to her parents first to ask their permission to marry their daughter. And it's funny, her father and I'll never forget his, his initial response. He was like, he just, Steve just kind of sat there for a second and he was like, you better be sure about this. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> it, was, it was a hard moment for me. I remember being a very, uh, very nervous moment for me. And then we went over to Kauai to go on the hike up to the Kalalau Trail. And she didn't know, obviously, what I had planned. My, pl my plan was to take her out to the Kalalau Trail and propose to her there. And it just, I'd never found the right moment. I had the ring inside of a rolled up sock. There was even a moment where she found, she was wearing a pair of my socks. She'd pull out of my bag and I, that's, I had had my, the rings hidden, rolled up in one of my socks in my bag. And I look over, she's got the socks on her feet and I was like, where'd you get those socks? Why, 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 what, 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 but she didn't like say, like, didn't seem like she had found anything. She just wore my socks. Luckily she grabbed a pair of socks that didn't have the ring in it. But no, there's no time on the beach in that, during that hike where I felt it was the right moment, you know? So we ended up, we actually had a little cliffside cabin rented back um, in civilization. And so it wasn't until we got, actually went back to that cottage the next day. And then I proposed to her right there on the cliff and I recorded it on video and everything. It's like one of the few things I recorded on video back then and somehow I don't know where the video went but <laughs> it was you know she was she was crying and the, the whole bit and the, I was laughing. <laughs> the first year of our marriage we did a lot of traveling and that was awesome. That was fantastic. Um, it was really good that we took that time before we had kids to go travel around and and see the world a bit because it would be much harder right now with kids than it was then. That was a good idea. That was a very, very good idea to do that. And then we had, an, we had another hiccup in our relationship. Well, it wasn't in our relationship, just a, a life hiccup. Um, when she was about six months, when she was pregnant with Noah, um, I got caught bringing marijuana cannabis on a plane in my, in my drums. And uh, that story, that's a whole other story, the details about that story. I'll, I'll go into that one because that was a whole, my whole experience inside the federal prison and like everything that, that happened there and how it made me a much better person, not just better, but a stronger person. This is going to be, this story is about Hillary and I, that's a whole other story. But how she dealt with that, I can, that's... I don't really, I didn't really have any regrets about that. My only regret is how, what had to happen with Hillary, you know, during that time is that she had to be, she was, she was pregnant when I got caught, but then I was on pretrial release. The, the, the trial didn't happen for a year and I was able to be on pretrial release because I wasn't a flight risk. I was, you know, first time, first time offender, didn't have a history, no criminal history. Um, so luckily I was able to be out. I was there to be there when Noah was born and then do that, do that whole thing and, and be there. But that, that didn't make it any easier to go in because I actually got sentenced when Noah was three months old and had to go inside at that time, which as hard as that was for me, I can only imagine it was much, much harder for Hillary and for my family and for everybody else. Um, so that was just another thing in our, in our relationship where it was, 
just amazing to see how she handled it and, and how strong of a woman she was to care for our son and start our family without me for the first few months. It was, that was, that was, pretty, that was, that was the roughest part of it for me was starting, oh my God, I said I wasn't gonna talk about this story, we're just gonna talk about Hillary. Um, yeah, being, being separated from, from those guys for what ended up being the first half of Noah's life up until the point he was six months old. That was a tough one. That was a tough one. But uh, obviously we got through it and it could have been much worse. I always think things can be much, much worse. And um, I'm, too, I'm trying not to turn this story into about me. This is about Hillary and how amazing Hillary is. She's just one of the most kind-hearted people out there. I mean, you know, obviously I'm a little bit biased, but I know people, I see people. There's a reason I married this woman is because she's one of the most kind-hearted, almost one of those people that doesn't have a, a single evil bone in their body. Uh, just always, almost almost caring, caring to a fault, where she cares so much about everything else and other people that she doesn't, Somebody could really take advantage of that. Sometimes I feel I am taking advantage of what an awesome person she is, um, just because I'm me. And anybody who's spent an, a significant amount of time around me knows that I'm good in small doses. You guys get me for you know a, a few minutes every week, every few days a week, and it's like I'm sure some of you even after even with that are like, okay, I'm, I've had enough of this dude. <laughs> Think about Hillary. Think about how much she's had to go through in the past 11 and a half years. And she still likes me. She still hangs out with me every day. She lets me sleep in the same bed and she gives me hugs and kisses. And I don't think getting married is for everybody. I think everybody's different. You need to find what you need in this world. Um, and I think that if I hadn't found Hillary, I probably wouldn't have gotten married because she just makes my life too good. It's, uh, I just know, you know, in my heart, it doesn't matter what, whatever happens, nothing, nothing could rip us apart, nothing could tear us apart. It's just not even a question for me. You know, it's, there's no, I never question like, oh, maybe this isn't gonna work, even when times are hard, because times get hard, you know, you get, you got the kids, and you're raising the kids, and sometimes and money troubles, and all that stress that can pile onto a relationship that takes away from the relationship. All that stuff has never been enough. All, none of that stuff could ever matter as much. It's just, you guys get what I'm saying here? So it's, it's our anniversary. Happy anniversary, babe. <sighs> it's weird. All these things I think about in my head with her, it's, it's weirder. It's, you sit in front of the camera, it gets, it gets weird to talk about. I have all these ideas of like how I'm gonna present what I'm talking about to Hillary and our relationship and it just, it, it throws it off. It throws it off. As, as natural as it seem, maybe seems to me to be on camera, it's completely unnatural. It's just not natural at all. It's like it, you know that there's a camera recording. You know that there's people listening. But I'm slowly, I'm slow. Every day I get a little bit better. I think of pushing that part aside, and just trying to forget that there's a camera, and just really letting what I really think, or what I really feel, come through. And. It's a journey, it's a process, it's a journey to eventually maybe conjure up exactly what it is that I feel deep in my soul at the core of my being and actually communicate that through the camera. That's something that I would, I'm working on every, every time I film basically, I think. My point is there are a bunch of stories in here. <laughs> 11 and a half years, there are a lot, a lot of stories to share in our relationship, but we're just gonna have to have Hillary on the vlog more often and we'll have to share some of those stories over time because otherwise we'll be sitting here talking for days and days and I think somebody might click off during that time and you don't wanna miss any of this stuff, guys. So <laughs> My main point is, Hillary, happy anniversary. I really can't put into words how much you have made my life the best life that I could imagine myself living. And uh, thank you for that.